Uh, hello, welcome to today's class. Uh, in today's class, we will continue discussing how Prolog answers questions. And in the last class, we saw how Prolog answers simple questions. And in today's class, we will see how Prolog answers questions uh, that require the use of recursive rules. And when answering this kind of questions, uh, Prolog may need to do backtracking uh, and that's what we will discuss in today's class. So we'll start with the program that we have. So this is the program we have. We have uh, the parent relation uh, where we have the information about who, who is the parent of whom and that relation is specified as a simple fact uh, and then we also have fact which tells us what is the gender of a person and for that we have two um, two different rules uh, unary rules uh, one rule is male the other rule is female and then we have two different rules for the ancestor relation and as you can see this is uh, this rule uh, is a recursive rule uh, to define the ancestor relation we use the ancestor uh, relation in the body of the rule also and uh, since we have two different clause for the ancestor relation we will use in our discussion we will name the first rule as a1 and we will name the second rule as a2 just for um, explanation purpose this is how we will name and the two rules and now let us say that we need to answer the question whether Tom is ancestor of Pat or not so the question that we are trying to answer is whether Tom is ancestor of Pat or not. And now when Prolog is given this question, Prolog will try to find what are the clause that match ancestor relation. And, uh, and then we will see that we have two different clause. Uh, this is the first clause that will match the ancestor relation and then we have one more clause also uh, the rule a2 which will also ma match uh, this ancestor relation um, and what prolog do is it first use the first rule the first clause that appears in the program so now to answer this question the this is the first rule that prolog will try to use and as we use this rule uh, in this rule we have two variables x and z and these variables x and z will get initialized to tom and pat because we are trying to answer the question whether tom is parent uh, whether tom is the ancestor of pat or not so uh, this and in the clause we have the two variables x and z so x will be instantiated to tom and z will be instantiated to pat so this is how the two variables will get instantiated and hence now uh, if we want to find satisfy this goal this goal will be satisfied uh, according to this rule according to this rule uh, the the, um, the, answer, the goal ancestor tom comma pet will be satisfied only when um, the body what is the, the goals that are in the body of the rule are satisfied so what do we have in the body of the rule in the body of the rule we have parent x comma z and we already said that the two variables x and z are instantiated to tom and pet so now the body of the rule uh, we have the goal parent tom comma pat so if we can satisfy uh, this goal 
parent that tom is the parent of uh, pat so if we can satisfy this goal then our ancestor our original goal will also be satisfied so hence our now new goal is to try to satisfy parent tom comma pat and now prolog will try to find clause that are in our program which match the parent uh, relation and here we have six different fact about the parent relation but we see that um, none of them none of this there is no fact which says that Tom is the parent of Pat in our program and since uh, we cannot find any clause which satisfy this goal uh, we said that this goal is not satisfied so this goal fails so if this goal fails then our original goal which was ancestor Tom comma Pat also fails so so using the first rule in our program we were not able to satisfy our original goal but we also have another ancestor relation and prologue will now try to satisfy the goal ancestor tom comma pet using this second rule a2 so prologue will backtrack to the original goal and now try to find an alternative way to satisfy this goal the first attempt uh, where we try to use the first rule that failed so now we backtrack and try a alternative way and since we have a second rule present in our program we will now try to use the second rule and see if we can satisfy uh, this goal and in this new rule that we want to try we have two variables x comma z and and since here we have the object tom comma pat x will be replaced instantiated by tom and z will be instantiated by pat and now in the body of this rule we have two goals one is parent x comma y and the second goal is ancestor y comma z so now if we have to satisfy ancestor x comma z we first have to satisfy the two goals that are in the body of the rule and hence our original goal uh, ancestor tom comma pet get replaced by the two new goals uh, parent tom comma y tom because x was instantiated to tom uh, and y we have not instantiated so it remains as y and the other goal ancestor y comma z get replaced by ancestor y comma pat because z is instantiated to pat so now our original goal ancestor tom comma pet gets replaced by two new goals parent tom comma y and ancestor y comma pet and now prologue will try to satisfy these two goals because only when we satisfy these two goals our original goal will be satisfied prologue will take the first goal that is in the body of the rule parent tom comma y and it will try to satisfy it and and prolog will search for clause that match the parent and we see that there are two possible fact that 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 are about parent relation and where uh, the first object is Tom so since we are discussing aware about uh, Tom is the parent of something somebody um, we can apply this to clause to satisfy this goal and as usual prologue will first try the first fact the first clause that appears in the program so prologue will first try to use uh, this clause and when we use this class um, our y 
so our goal was parent tom comma y this is the goal that we are trying to satisfy and we are applying this fact and when we apply this fact our y will be replaced by bob so y is instantiated to bob and when we instantiate y to bob this goal parent tom comma bob is automatically satisfied because we have a fact in our program which will match the goal so the first goal is thus satisfied and our second goal which was ancestor y comma pet becomes ancestor bob comma pet because y has been instantiated to bob so we can replace y by bob so our second goal which was ancestor y comma pet will now become equal to ancestor bob comma pet and out of these two goals the first goal is already satisfied now we all we are left with now to satisfy the goal ancestor bob comma pet so prolog will now try to satisfy this new goal ancestor bob comma pet and for that we can apply uh, again uh, prolog again will search for what clause will match this ancestor uh, relation and prolog will find that there are two different rules the two different clause that can be used and prolog will first try to use the first clause and this will force so apply the first ancestor rule and this will force the variables x and z to get instantiated to bob and pat so x will be instantiated to bob and z will be instantiated to pat but however if you note we are not using the variable names x and z we are using x x dash and uh, z dash um so we use um, we use this new names for the variables x prime and z prime that's because this is the second application of the same rule remember earlier we had applied this same rule to satisfy our original goal and sister tom comma pat and that rule actually failed and now we are again applying this rule for a second time so whenever we apply a rule um for well, one more time we use new variable names so instead of the names x and z we are using x prime and z prime if we use a third number of time we will use x double prime z double prime and so on so every time uh, the same rule is applied we try to name the variables differently so our variables x prime and z prime gets instantiated to bob and pat because this is the this is the goal that we are trying to satisfy and um, and in this rule our body was parent x comma z and hence uh, and hence we can satisfy the ancestor we can satisfy this goal ancestor bob comma pat only if we can satisfy the goal parent bob comma pat so now our our goal of our goal was to satisfy ancestor bob comma pat and we can satisfy this if we can satisfy the goal parent bob comma pat um and this new goal is easily satisfied because we have a fact which says so and now we are no more we don't have any more goals to be satisfied all the required goals has been satisfied and hence we can say that our original goal the our original question which was ancest whether tom is the ancestor of pat or not has been satisfied uh, whatever i have discussed here can be diagrammatically showed using a execution trace Uh, and let me show you the execution trace so this was the original question whether tom is the ancestor of pat or not so we are trying to satisfy this goal 
and to satisfy this goal if you as you remember in our discussion we first apply the first ancestor rule which was rule a1 so we apply rule a1 and if you remember in rule a1 the body of the rule has only one goal and that is and that goal is parent x comma z so so now we can satisfy the ancestor goal only if we can satisfy the body of the rule which was parent x comma z and since x is tom and z is pet the the goal the the, the goal in the body becomes parent tom comma pet so in order to satisfy we have we have to satisfy this if we can satisfy the parent then a, then automatically will it will satisfy the ancestor um, goal also and if you remember in our discussion uh, we could not find a clause which satisfy parent tom comma pet and hence we said that this goal is not satisfied and since this goal is not satisfied what we did is we backtracked we backtracked to the original goal and then we try to apply the second rule the rule a2 and in the rule a2 if you remember the body had two goals the body had parent x comma y and ancestor y comma z so if we have to satisfy our original ancestor goal we have to satisfy and that goal will be satisfied if we can satisfy uh, the parent goal and the ancestor goal so parent x comma z sorry parent x comma y gets replaced with parent tom comma y and the goal in the body which was ancestor y comma z gets replaced by ancestor y comma pet because x will be instantiated to tom and z will be instantiated to pet so now we are left with these two new goals to be satisfied and out of these two goals we first take the goal parent tom comma y and we see that we can use the fact parent tom comma bob uh, actually there were two fact that we can apply for this goal parent tom comma y and prolog takes the first uh, goal uh, prolog takes the first clause and the first clause was parent tom comma bob and using this clause we will try to satisfy the goal parent tom comma y and as we apply this clause y will be instantiated to bob and when we instantiate y by bob we automatically have satisfied this goal parent tom comma y because parent tom comma bob is a fact that is present in our program so now having satisfied the parent goal we are left with only one more goal which is ancestor uh, y is replaced by bob so this goal becomes ancestor bob comma pet and now to satisfy this new goal we again apply the rule a1 to satisfy this goal again we can apply rule a1 or we can apply rule a2 but prolog will first try the first rule that appears in the program and the first rule that appears in the program is a1 and when we apply rule a1 our x will be instantiated to bob and y will be instantiated to pet and if you remember in rule a1 uh, what was rule a1 in rule a1 we had the body parent x comma z so this goal gets replaced with the body of the rule which is parent x comma z and x is bob and z is pet so we have this new goal parent bob comma pet and um, 
and this goal can be automatically satisfied because we have a fact uh, we have the same fact in our program so this will be satisfied so yes so we finally get a leaf node with the answer yes and hence we can say that our original question which was ancestor tom comma pet can be satisfied it is true it is true that tom is ancestor of pet so if you look at this execution trace we first tried to apply rule a1 but we failed when we went in that direction and then we backtracked and then we tried rule a2 and finally we were able to uh, arrive at the answer yes so this is called the execution trace and if you look at the execution trace the execution trace has the form of a tree uh, the nodes in the tree correspond to goals or list of goals that needs to be satisfied so here we have two goals that need to be satisfied so every node has what are the goals that need to be satisfied in so here we have to satisfy the goal parent tom comma pet in this node we have to satisfy uh, the goals parent tom comma comma y ancestor y comma pet so we have to satisfy two goals so like that in every node we have the goals that need to be satisfied uh, the arc the edge between the nodes correspond to the application of different program clauses that transform the goals at one node into goals into another node so this edge these are the applications of different clause in the program so here we applied the rule here we applied the fact and by doing that we transform our goals to another form Uh, the top goal is satisfied when a path is found from the root node to a leaf node which is labeled yes so our root node will be satisfied if we can have a leaf which has the answer yes and this leaf node has the answer no but this leaf node has the answer yes so we can say that the original question at the root node is satisfied um, and a leaf is labeled yes if it is a simple fact simple fact and that fact is present in our program so now the execution of prolog programs is nothing but uh, searching for such path so in this state space we have to find a path which leads us to the answer yes so as you can see this is nothing but a search problem that we are discussing in our theory class and during the search prolog may enter a unsuccessful branch when prolog discovers a branch fails it automatically backtracks to the previous node and tries to apply an alternative clause at that node automatic backtracking is one of the distinguishing features of prolog so so we see that answering questions in prolog is nothing but a kind of a uh, search problem so with this i would like to end today's class we'll meet again in the next class uh, thank you